Should you watch 12 Angry Men? 12 Angry Men is a black and white film set almost entirely in a single room where drama unfolds through dialogue rather than physical action. At 90 minutes, this film is concise, making it relatively easy to engage with despite its intense focus on dialogue. We spoke about this extensively. The idea of a perfect film for us being within that 90 to two hour range. Really, this is... I mean, we're going to say this, but this is amazing. This film is so good. Love it. And the runtime is a big part of that. We tried to stay objective, but this is one of the best films we've ever watched. The judicial system portrayal. It offers an accessible introduction to the judicial system, explaining necessary details clearly and allowing viewers to learn about those judicial basics. So you do not need to know anything about it to watch this film. It's really a bit of a masterclass in uh, exposition. It does a great job of setting these characters in an environment where they can talk about themselves. I'm sure Jamie will go into this in a bit because we're going to have a, a bit of a discussion on character. But for the purposes of the judicial system, early on they say these are exactly the par- parameters and constraints that we're working towards. And you don't question it. It's, it's very easily explained. The stakes are laid out in black yeah. and white at the start and it really helps the film. Exploration of prejudice. The film delves into themes like the flaws in the judicial system and prejudice, presenting these in a way that encourages the viewers to form their own opinions rather than being told what to think. And one of the small gripes I'd have with this is actually in this, this section, like... Th- because of the way the characters are formed, they have to be quite caricatured. Another thing that we spoke about a lot in the full podcast. Um, and that works because you have very memorable characters. In the case of the um, prejudicial characters, it can be a bit heavy handed and a bit over the top. Worth bearing in mind that this was also a stage show as well. And, and elements of that become quite clear. Um, you'll probably love the charm of it, but it is a bit, it's a bit force fed sometimes. Um, the next point that came up was, uh, was actually on pretty much that exact thing. The 12 jurors each represent different societal behaviors, mm. prejudices, or personality types. While some characters are very complex and well-developed, others saw, serve more straightforward roles. But you will leave this film remembering and caring about in some way every single one of them they do an excellent job with that and when we spoke i've seen this film a few times this was jambo's first time watching it um one of the opening shots is of the jurors themselves and i remember just being a marked thought that i remember each of their different storylines it's been a few years since i've watched this I, i can clearly remember each character and what each character believes what their motives are what their identity is uh, and that is just testament to how these have been crafted, how the, the stage has been set and how well they do at bringing out each character's individual identity. The narrative serves as a lesson in persuasion, compassion, patience and decency, highlighting the importance of questioning assumptions and understanding human behavior. It's like Fred says, it can be heavy handed at times, but the themes that it touches on are very nuanced and there are a lot of them and it's a very interesting take on all of them yeah and in some ways so one of our other like we loved it we love the story this this plot is is awesome um if if a minor gripe would be in some elements you think okay this is almost like a writing exercise and without going into too much detail like the the way that the narrative is constructed you're almost quite early on able to to work out where it's going and you're just waiting to see how the writer takes you there um, and sometimes or almost all the time it's it's excellently done and there are a few moments where you're like okay maybe that particular scene wouldn't play out like that um, and although it's not entirely supposed to be realistic quote unquote sometimes the uh the mystique does does wane a bit and i tell you what there's a point that you brought up there that i haven't written down which i think is important if you're trying to decide whether to watch this film or not it isn't brutally realistic okay no. there is, you're not going to watch a documentary there are It is almost an adaptation. If not, it is an adaptation of a uh, theatre performance. There is, you have to suspend some, you have to be able to accept that there is some artistic decision making in that. And yeah, just to clarify, so we Reginald Rose wrote it. It is a screenplay, but it's so it feels so much like a theatre performance. It has been adapted to theatre. They're almost intrinsically linked. Is it, for my money, as close to a theatre production that you'll see on on the screen that that I've watched, um, and 
again, that that does work. You you really do fall into it and then are completely happy going along that ride for 90 minutes of this. Due to the exceptional writing. The cinematic importance. This is one of the most influential films ever made. 12 Angry Men is a must watch if you are interested in becoming more culturally aware and understanding cinematic history. Yeah, so I believe I'm right in thinking there is no film older that is as high on IMDb's top 250 movies list. Uh, and we were we spent a lot of time trying to work out why it is. Like, this has stood the test of time. And, and why is that? I mean, I'm just looking now. It's a fifth, fifth to, yeah. in the top 250. It's from 1957. From the um, 50s. Part of that is just the story is just so well crafted and so interesting. A lot of it is to do with the characters and how they present each of the characters. Um, but yeah, in terms of impact and cinematic importance, I mean, you don't see many films from the 50s that critically revered now or in these discussions and and there's a reason for that it's aged it's aged wonderfully like fine wine and i think it's because at its core it is an unbelievable story and it has and it explores characters in a way that i genuinely don't think i've seen mm. any other film ever do yeah and and to be specific on that without spoiling we we said specifically it's the ability to have 12 very distinct memorable characters within 90 minutes each be fleshed out that that is so like trying to understand how uh, reginald did that effectively that that seems so hard it seems impossible to do it without some of them being throwaway characters but but they're not he pulls it off uh engagement viewers you need to be prepared for a film that focuses very heavily on dialogue and character in interaction <clears throat> with the entire plot revolving around a life or death decision based on a conversation. Now, this is where it, it's important to help you decide if this is a film for you. This, for me, is a strength of the film. Mm. The fact that it, it takes place within the constraints of a single room and a single conversation is not something that i am just willing to accept it is one of the very things that i really love about this film yep. but if that is something that you struggle with if dialogue if dialogue only is mm. something you struggle with then this might not be the film for you and what to, to add to that what i will say is yes you'd have thought going into this with that description of a film that it wouldn't be for everyone but you would be surprised by how broad the audience for this is the reason being they tackle something that is incredibly complex and intricate with 12 different voices and do it with such remarkable clarity that at no point, having watched this a few times now, I, I think having spoken to you about it, did you ever feel that you lost or missed something? No. They're incredibly clear yeah. with every point. Um, I can't say that everyone will find it as clear as we do. I, I, I don't know. I haven't shown it to people who don't pay attention in movies and I do know people who don't pay attention in films <laughs> so I can only say that for for us considering what they have laid out to do they do it in a way that is incredibly direct well laid out and clear and more to the point on the breadth of interest the the fifth the highest rated film of all time yeah. on IMDb it's film from the okay. 50s so Maybe just give this one a chance, even if it doesn't sound like the film mm. for you, because of its influence, because of the fact that it has still managed to pull off such an insanely high score despite these constraints, you might find yourself happily surprised. Yeah. The next, so it's the fifth, the next one that is older than it is the 21st. So that's It's a Wonderful Life, which again has aged amazingly. <laughs> but I haven't I, watched that one. Really? Yeah. Christmas one. Okay. To conclude, 12 Angry Men is more than just a film. It's a profound study of humanity under pressure. It's ideal for those interested in the intricacies of human behavior, the complexities of the judicial system, and the power of dialogue to reveal deeper truths. Thanks so much for listening. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks, Dave.